This one's a video I've got for you. AEW versus Bill 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 Apter. AEW mm-hmm. versus Bill Apter. Uh, our friends at Sports Keeda a few days ago released a video with Bill Apter on one of his podcasts for the uh, uh, wrestling news site. And he said the following. Let me just tee it up. Okay, so the following is about 37, well, it's exactly 37 seconds worth of audio from uh, Bill Apter talking about his relationship and trying to get AEW uh, 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 contracted employees onto interview and his experience with AEW. I had mentioned to both of you because uh, uh, Mac, it was you and I yep. were discussing that I do interviews with WWE guys on the after chat, um, indie guys, veterans, but why no AEW, right? So well, AEW, for, I have asked ad nauseum for the past six months or more about doing AEW interviews, storyline based, just based on their angles or whatever. I'm not mm-hmm. one of these guys that does the politics. And I keep getting from their PR thing, dear Bill, thanks for email. We're not doing interviews. So, thank you, Bill. We're not doing interviews. Uh, so, what do you make of that? Because WWE these days is now a lot easier to deal with as far as uh, you know talent relations and being seen by the public and doing podcasts and stuff. Whereas AEW are getting more closed off. Uh, what do you think about that? I actually, I think that's a mistake. interview a guy from AEW and if he doesn't put the company over Mm -hmm. (laughs) if he doesn't put over the company well then just get rid of him do you think it's scared because of when they let MJF do podcasts and then he just trashed the company (laughs) yeah but see that's again I go back to Tony needs to be a boss if Peter trashed me and I'm and he may even be right what, with what he's saying, I would say, don't take it public. You never take it public in anything. If you're playing football and you're the best player on the team and you know, you're the best player and the fans know you're the best player. But if you go on and trash the coach, that does nobody any good. Mm-hmm. Nobody. The people don't like the team. They got a bunch of, you know, nitpickers behind the scenes and you're not getting your chance because of this and this and this and this. That doesn't accomplish anything. So if AEW guys are told not to do interviews, that may be a one of the signs of why they're leaking things to the, to the dirt sheets because they can't talk otherwise. I think that's a a bad business decision. And I think those guys need to be sat down and say, don't talk out of school so much. Mm. I mean, like we do this podcast, we don't really know what's going on. But if we did, if we told it, it's going to, and it's not true, but say we had a boss and we're working in this company. And all of a sudden we said, well, they didn't like this and the creative didn't like that. And, you know, and I'm not allowed to do this. And well, then you're going to get more calls to the company to talk to the guy who said that. And now it it creates more trouble than what it's, what it's worth and what it's worth. It may get you fired. Mm. Okay. If you have a hundred thousand dollar a year job and you're not working all year, why would you say anything bad? about your employer, mm-hmm. I'd be putting them over like the second coming say, damn, I don't got to do nothing. I can sit here and, you know, I get to check every week or every two weeks or whatever they send. Why would I be knocking them? And then I can work independence too. I'd be in heaven back if I was 30 years old or 25 years old. But a lot of these guys, they look at wrestling as they want to be stars. And I don't blame them for that because if you don't think you're a star, you don't have any business being in wrestling, but you can't let everybody know that you just got to go be a star and keep your mouth shut. Mm. How hard is that to do? But I can see why AEW probably doesn't allow it. And I, because you know why, if they don't allow it, what's that tell you? They don't trust their talent. Mm. I, I've got a story for you. Dutch, uh, that I didn't even tell you I was going to tell you about. 
So this is not story time with James, you know. I will. This is well. This can be reaction time with Dutch. Uh, you, okay, you, okay, okay. <laughs> you let me know. I got it. So when Bill says, and I've got the quote in front of me, uh, you know. Uh, I never th- I say I've got the quote I can't find it dear Bill thanks for the email we're not doing interviews so the first time uh, right so I'll say this now AEW and I've dealt with a lot of different uh, quite a few different wrestling leagues uh, over you know the few years that I've been doing this all of them are infinitely more professional than AEW's clown show of a media relations department they are the worst I'll give you a couple of examples why they're the what? The, they are the worst, not the worst. What's like the other word? What's the other oh, word? It's just one use? giant clown show going oh. on there as, as far as media relations, as far as I can I, I thought you were going to call them the S word. Oh, the shits with a Z. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. James said it. I didn't say it. Go ahead. Go ahead so, James. anyway, the first time I wrote to them was uh, initially I'd written to Tony Schiavone because so I wanted to have him on WSI. This is before we were doing our podcast. And I said, hi, Tony, I'm so-and-so, you know the thing. Uh, Any chance I can book you for an interview? And he said, yes, but uh, you have to run it through AEW first. So I email AEW and say, can I have Tony Schiavone for any date that he's free? And they write back and say, Tony Schiavone's not doing interviews. And I was like, well, he just, him or his person just said he was fine to do an interview. But then AEW's blocking it. So then... Over the next year or so, I write to AEW very sporadically and just say, hello, I'm so-and-so, I've got this many followers, and any chance any of your, uh, you know, there's a pay-per-view coming up, for example, any chance I can have someone on? Absolute radio silence, never get a, never get a reply. So at this point, I'm thinking, well, I must be on some sort of internal blacklist of people not to talk to. Considering that, you know, WSI is one of the most watched wrestler interview uh, interview uh, wrestler interview specific channels out there it seems a bit weird and I was thinking am I on a blacklist because I was seeing AEW talents appear on far smaller podcasts and far less subscribed to channels so I was thinking that's weird how they're getting talent there but I'm not so uh, I tried one last time for All In and uh, so let's say the show was on at August uh, I write in May uh, before even the tickets probably been on sale at that point, I don't know, and say, hello, uh, you know, I'm UK-based, I have a large UK following, because uh, that makes sense, mm-hmm. and, you know, you want to sell tickets, I want some content, why don't we do a couple of interviews and then, you know, really push hard selling more tickets? And someone actually did write back to me that time and just said, can you write back in a few weeks? So I did, and then got radio silence again. And then about a few weeks or a month beforehand, I write and say, look, am I on a blacklist? Can you not provide me talent? And also, the other thing I was going to say was I said, any chance I can have a press pass for the show as well? Because then I can do some filming of the Mm -hmm. press scrums. Who knows? Another fight might break out. It'd be good for the channel. And uh, I was told two things eventually. So I write back again and again and again, finally get a reply and say, uh, one am I on a blacklist? I'm told no. And then I'm told that I didn't follow protocol to get interviews the previous time, which I did, which that was just made up bollocks. Uh, The Mm -hmm. other thing was I was told I couldn't have a press pass because essentially I wasn't important enough. Now, that's all well and good. You know, I'm not obviously BBC or ESPN or something like that. But the fact is that they were giving out press passes to uh, previous pay-per-views in 2023 to people who had, like, Twitter followers or YouTube subscribers in the dozens. So they I just don't like you. Well, that's what I'm sort of understanding here now. But the fact is, is that why don't you just, like, grow a set and just say, uh, grow a set we of don't like and just you. say, we don't like you, we don't want any... But the thing was, is that this isn't... I mean, it sounds like I'm whining that, oh, AEW don't want to work with me. Like, you know, I've got enough content for forever you know, for the channel. It's not a problem. It's just like, they can't be straight with me. Do you want say, me to call them up? Do you have that? Oh, they'll I'll, never reply I'll to will you. Call, I will call them son of a bitches up. <laughs> and I say, you insulted my friend James, which I don't like. And I said, if you continue to act this way, I will have, where are they, where are they located? Jacksonville? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could drive up there. I'm going to come up to Jacksonville and I'm going to lay a whooping on somebody's ass. You should ass. do some Ram like raiding. Bring Ram yeah. raiding back. We don't see yeah. that often enough. But the, <laughs> but the fact is, is that I'm sort of bolstering Bill Apter's thing here. 
is that well, yeah. Bill Apt is obviously way more well known than I am uh, in this interview wrestler game, and AEW is saying the same thing to him. We're not doing interviews at this time, but I don't know. But aside from the fact that they'll either ignore you, I, or I am lie going to. You. Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. I am seriously going to write them and ask, can I have some talent made yeah. available to me for this, and see what they say. Uh, I am. Do it, and we'll make sure, and we'll see what they say. If you yes, do it, we will. if you do it today, before this episode comes out tomorrow, I would love to know what they say if they reply to you. But it's just like oh, they know. won't reply today. I'm sure, but yeah. Uh, anyway, it's late in the day for them. It's like twelve o'clock yeah. at noon, and they go they go home at one. So I heard. So there you go. There's, if they even go, even if they go in the office. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Um, I'm trying to think. You'll be done early. But, but I will. I will. You have to give me the email address. Okay. I'll give you the email address. Uh, but yeah, so I can totally back Bill oh, Actor up there. Okay. Let me, let me just, this is a previous subject. Okay. How close are we to 100,000 subscribers? Oh, I don't know. Probably a few weeks away. We're within 2,000. Yeah. We're 98 something now. That's That's good. Let me have a look. Let me. Have I a mean, look. I've subscribed as much as I can. Once. <laughs> Here we go. Ninety-eight thousand well, four hundred eighty-seven. We'll make it in. A, we'll make it in two, three weeks. I think. Well, we only got what sixteen hundred. Yeah, for fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred is all we need now. Very good. Hmm. So tell all your friends. Click subscribe under how many names you have, and and keep listening. But you know, I this is. I really like this podcast because it is like, seriously, like getting in a car, driving down the road and having a conversation with one of my colleagues back and forth. And we're not knocking too many people. I mean, you got to knock somebody. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the purpose of it. So, and now see, I would never know, have known about your interchange with AEW, but had I you not never told, told me, you. I've, no, I've, I've not never I was told saving me. it for this podcast, but I, uh, uh, I'm going to do a video on it elsewhere, I think, as well. Okay. Can you say who you talked to? I don't know anyone's name. They, I don't even think they ever gave names. I know I'm pretty sure I spoke to more than one person. It's probably Aubrey mm -hmm. Edwards, for all I know. So you, so you have a number? No, 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 no. They never left their name on the email. So it, oh, it was I see. Probably interchangeable. But, Maybe uh, I'll call Tony himself. You've got his all number. he could do is not take the all he could do is not take the call. Yeah. But back to Jerry Lynn, that he doesn't like all that. Mm -hmm. I I can see that because it is very frustrating to be on a member of Creative and having some things leaked or being called old and out of touch and not knowing what you're doing to have a kid who's been in the business like a year or two telling you that mm. or not necessarily maybe pointing you out, but creative, you don't know what you're doing and they're going to do what they want to do. So what happened to the guy who went off the ladder? This, this is, he went off the ladder and broke his leg. They shot him. <laughs> they shoot horses, don't yeah, they? Yeah, 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 yeah. But he hasn't been back to work, has he? No, I'm not sure. No, be because back he, he might be. I don't, I don't think he can walk. Is he Dante Martin. I actually remembered his name this time. But Don, Dante Martin, and I, I hope he's fine. I think he will be. But yeah. and all these spots that they want to do, they look great on TV. And the people who remember them, well, we remember it because it's our job, but they'll remember it like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. But he's going to remember that every time he looks down on his leg at the scar, he's going to remember it his entire life. Do you know what AEW needs is a mash unit? Is a what? Mash unit. What does that mean? You must have seen mash. Back in I the did see mash, but what is a... Like like a <clears throat> like an uh, army triage hospital sort of thing, like built up in you know outside oh, yeah. the arena for all the all the dead and broken down wrestlers that they're, <laughs> they're getting injured every single week. Well, what surprised me they is somehow Sting 
<laughs> I think this brought on his retirement, but he wanted to come off the ladder. And when I saw that, I went, uh-uh, no sting. Mm -hmm. You're 60 something years old. Don't come off that ladder. And he missed. He almost killed himself. And he's lucky he didn't get hurt. He really is. That's a drop of 15 feet with the force of gravity. And he weighs 230 pounds and hitting a concrete floor, which, by the way, does not work with you. It's, it's there and hit me if you want to, but you're not moving me. So. Hawkeye and Trapper John to theatre. We've got another one. Sting this time. He came off a ladder. Oh, yeah. Through early so, morning. So we're coming in. 